Hello, we're going to talk to you today about some mechanical engineering careers. My name is Chad Jorgensen, and I'm a mechanical engineer that graduated from South Dakota School of Mines and in, uh, in 1994, and I am from Western South Dakota. All right, and I'm Aaron Jorgensen, I'm also going to School for Mechanical Engineering at the South Dakota School of Mines, and I'm currently a junior. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, kind of what you want to do in high school to prepare for the career and then what college will be like for the engineering degree. So I guess um, most of mechanical engineering is a lot of math and also things like SolidWorks, which is a 3D modeling program where you can design parts. Um, so I guess classes to take in high school would be anything math related. Um, if you can take chemistry for college credit, that's always helpful. And also if your school provides any sort of CAD programs or like, you know, um, PLTW was a good one to teach Autodesk Inventor and that really helped with kind of having a base knowledge of CAD when I got to school. Um, I guess there's also extracurriculars such as FRC, um, which is a robotics competition and other engineering related extracurriculars are always good. Um, otherwise just taking hard classes in general, the thing that'll prepare you most. Um, one thing I'd, one thing I'd add Aaron, if there was some kind of uh, metal, metal working shop or something, at least for mechanical engineers, mm -hmm. if there's a, if there's a class that gives you hands-on skills, uh, that would be helpful. Yeah, for sure. Cause I remember like the first time I ever designed something, it, it didn't fit together and having a knowledge of how it gets manufactured allows you to, yeah, like you're saying, design much better parts. Um, I guess for post-secondary, there is a, you need a four year degree. Um, a lot of engineering schools though, that ends up being four and a half or five years, just because it's a hard degree that takes some time or sometimes you will get a summer job that's a summer and a semester and that's really good experience, but that'll generally push your degree back an extra semester or a year. Um, I guess, I'm currently getting my education at, we already kind of talked about this, didn't we? Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of good schools out there. Um, you know, we both have gone or are going to South Dakota School of Mines, which is it's a good value. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing to touch on is those internships are good. You know, they are, I think uh, your school said the average salary is $17 an hour or something about like that for these internships. So it's, it's not like it's costing you money to do it. It just does, delay um, how long until you get your degree. Um, mm -hmm. Those are definitely a good thing to get. Um, so I think the, the starting, you know, we jump into more professional life here. The, the, oh, one, one other thing, Aaron, what about uh, post-secondary activities? That's not really on our list here. There are a lot of opportunities for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're talking like extracurriculars outside of your degree or? Yeah, like the Baja cars or um, the super mileage car, things like that. Yeah, so a lot of colleges have design competitions and those are really good experience because I guess when you go into a job and need to design something for the first time, that's a uh, very, it can be very overwhelming, I guess. And if you have the experience designing something out, you know, on an extracurricular team that helps a lot because the design work that you do in class is they do teach it but it's not as um it's not as involved as if you're on a design team um in class you know you might design or build like a a shelf or you know something small like that and that's a lot different than designing an entire baja car which is like an off-road vehicle i guess the team i'm on is super mileage and we designed a little one person car for maximum fuel efficiency. So I think definitely joining one of those um, design competitions will set you ahead and really help you learn what, help you apply what you learned in the classroom a lot better. And it, said it gives you some differentiation maybe from some of the other people looking for jobs. And if nothing else, it gives you something to talk about and relate with when you're in job interviews. So plus, the, uh, well, Aaron, you had yeah, yeah. plus there's always like, 
everyone talks about it being on your resume, but they're also a lot of fun. It's a great way to meet people when you're a freshman and all that too. It's, I don't know, probably one of my favorite activities I do in college. Good. Um, so we're just talking about some salaries. Uh, there, most of the colleges will have on their, you know, in their programs, what their starting salary is. Um, I'm familiar with South Dakota School Mines um, because Aaron is going there. Um, it's, uh, I think it was around $63,000 starting salary and they have a 96% placement rate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, if you back that down into some basic math here, you know, South Dakota School Mines costs roughly $20,000 a year. So, you know, even if you have to take a small loan, you could uh, knock that out pretty fast if you maintain your uh, college uh, spending habits <laughs> for a couple of years after you start. Yep. Good job. Um, I think the competition for the jobs varies dramatically um, based on the economy. Um, when I graduated, the jobs were pretty hard to find. Uh, three or four years later, they were pretty easy to find. Uh, I don't know, Aaron, I don't know if you know, but I guess right now with the, uh, with the pandemic going on, job opportunities are probably uh, hard to find, right? Yeah, it depends a little bit on the industry, but yeah, they're for the most part harder yeah. to find. So mechanical engineering um, is one of the broadest engineering along with electrical engineering. So the types of jobs that are available just are very broad, anywhere from designing HVAC systems uh, to manage the heat in air conditioning in buildings. Uh, I think some plumbing in buildings to, I work in machine design um, where we design forestry equipment at a company called Wilder uh, Forestry. You know, so it's, you know, that's the, what you think of as the you know, big machine design, uh, automotive design, aerospace. Um, a lot of times mechanical engineers end up becoming uh, system control designers. Uh, so not really computer science and programming, but you know, taking a machine and writing the software that controls the motion of the machine. So um, mechanical engineering is just a, you know, you like engineering is a great, uh, a great place to start um, because there is such a broad uh, type, of, um, type of jobs and companies that hire. Um, I found the advancement opportunities pretty good if you hustle a little bit. Uh, one of the um, one of the, the things I do think that when you uh, try to understand what kind of company or co-op with one or more companies, because there's kind of a couple of different approaches. You have companies that are big that have lots of uh, progression and opportunities and moving around the country uh, kind of places, or where you can really study something. Uh, a lot and be very, very deep in your knowledge. And then smaller companies, you're a bit of, uh, you know, do a lot of different things um, and it's a faster pace. So that's something that I urge, you know, people to think about when, when you're in college is what kind of, what kind of opportunities do you want? Big multinational companies have multinational opportunities for your job locations. You know, just things like that to think about um, entrepreneurially opportunities in mechanical engineering. Um, I'm not so much familiar with them because I work in big heavy equipment that requires millions and millions of dollars worth of, you know, buying parts and buying equipment. Uh, I do know that there are a lot of, uh, with smaller parts and maybe in, in your, you're into entrepreneurially opportunities that you look into. So maybe you might be able to answer this question a little bit better, but with 3D printing and other rapid manufacturing processes. I think there's a lot of opportunities for in, in mechanical engineering. Do you have something mm -hmm. to add, Aaron? Yeah, I mean, if you're interested specifically in entrepreneurship, I wouldn't go into mechanical engineering, but if you're interested in mechanical engineering, there are a lot of ways you can take that into entrepreneurship. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, I guess, a lot of the mechanical, um, entrepreneurship things they do require a little bit more work to get set up than for example a app or something like that but also i think they're a lot cooler for example i met a guy who was creating a startup to make rocket thrusters actually um and previous to that he had made a startup to um test the other company's rocket thrusters and he did that with a mechanical engineering degree so i guess there's plenty of opportunities um and they're they just require a little bit more um, 
a little bit more set up than, for example, if you try to apply a CSC degree to entrepreneurship. And a lot of colleges will have entrepreneur clubs. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's something to take advantage of also. Yeah. Um, for example, like my school, it's an engineering school and they have a uh, competition every year with a $5,000 cash reward. Um, and basically students apply with their business plans and then they pitch their business plans to a panel of judges and whichever one they think is most viable and the most well put together, uh, they walk home with $5,000 to spend on whatever they want. Nice. So my average day is, there's really no average day. Um, if I'm uh, working on a design, you know, my average day will be, um, you know, coming up with designs, brainstorming, talking to people to see if things are feasible, uh, seeing if we meet the criteria using a lot of CAD um, because uh, I'm currently working in a small company and we do everything from uh, visiting with the customer to figuring out what is needed to 3D modeling to making the 2D prints to manufacture it. And we actually uh, put equipment together. I spent the last two weeks in a factory in Georgia working on uh, assembling prototypes. Um, so that's what I like about the small company environment uh, where, you know, you can, you get a chance to do a lot of these things. Um, the, you know, hours depend, you know, we have to get the job done, you know, so engineering is often not the uh, 40 hours and you hit the door kind of, uh, kind of um, career. Most companies will say 45 is their expectation uh, for a minimum. Uh, and it is usually a salary, always a salaried position. So that's kind of how that goes. I do think, Aaron, that there is some maybe advantage of describing what you do on a day in college, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I guess most of my day is pretty much half watching lectures, half um, doing the homework for them. I'd say I probably spend, what is it? I spend 15 to 18 hours a week watching lectures and then I spend the other 35 to 22 doing homework. So approximately, you know, at least 40 hours a week is an easy week at, as far as class goes. And then other extracurricular activities such as playing ultimate Frisbee. Um, we do that three nights a week and then running the design club as well. So I guess that's, I stay pretty busy, but I like to do that. Um, you can definitely probably get by with a good 50 hours a week in engineering school and be successful, I'd say, if you just do the school. So hopefully everybody here is actually not gonna have to sit in their apartments watching videos, Aaron. Is there, was there any difference like uh, before the whole video watching started that you would wanna describe? Oh yeah, um, yeah, so I guess I used to, I spent about the same amount of time doing each thing, but it's a lot different because I would go to lectures, you know, you see your friends in passing time and stuff like that. And then when I was doing homework, a lot of time that was like spent with um, classmates or other people in the class. So even though you're spending 50 hours a week, a lot of it is kind of, I guess, time you spend with your friends, even if you're working, it's still, you know, it's not like you're sitting there alone working. You have people to work with, you take breaks to eat or, you know, go walk around quick and stuff like that. So it's, um, yeah, I, I remember yeah. we, we spent a lot of time in the library around a chair. Usually it was like the, the same groups are always there. You know, mm -hmm. they all had their tables that they went to every time. <laughs> yep. And yeah, it's a lot of work, but also you end up doing all that work with your friends. So it's a lot of fun too. So I find a lot of the soft skills, uh, that are required, you know, the obvious ones, you know, you know, being punctual and, you know, being responsible. But the thing that took me a while to, to grow up and understand was the value of really making a personal connection with people. Um, mm -hmm. one, of my, one of my favorite stories is that for weeks, I'd been going back and forth with a person in, um, they call it parts authoring. They basically set up the parts uh, to, uh, this is when I worked for a big company, they set up the parts to be purchased by the dealers. So one day I was actually in the same facility as this person was, and I, uh, I said, can I just come see you? Um, so I went up uh, and we had a conversation for a little while. I made a few comments and we talked about some pictures that uh, she had on the wall. And then after that, every time, um, basically if there's a problem, she said, Hey, I think this is going to be a problem. You want to check us out? You know, so the, just having that personal connection mm -hmm. totally flipped the whole relationship. So I, 
I think that that's something that, you know, at least I was slow in maturing and understanding. I think um, a lot of those things are taught more um, nowadays than they, than they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the same thing kind of applies for professors. If you always go into their office hours and ask for help and stuff like that, sometimes you'll get points back on exams or homework and stuff like that too. Um, nice. All right, Aaron, uh, I guess now we are going to tell our journeys. Do you want to, do you want to start on that one? Sure. So I guess I joined FRC robotics in high school. Um, if you're not familiar with it, we just, um, every January we had six weeks to design and build a robot and then we'd go compete with it. Um, and I guess I really enjoyed the design process, you know, brainstorming, narrowing down your ideas, and then actually designing it in Autodesk Inventor. Um, so I guess that's what made me decide I want to be a mechanical engineer. And um, I chose School of Mines mostly based off of um, price to average starting salary, one of the better budget schools in the nation. And then I guess the person who started me along the way and guided me was actually probably my dad you um because thanks there was a lot of like in robotics you taught a lot of the um design process and a lot of the CAD software and stuff like that and I guess if I hadn't done all of that design work I probably wouldn't have considered engineering as heavily as I did now so yeah, my story is a little bit different because um, growing up in Western South Dakota, um, there, you know, back in the nineties, there wasn't a lot of social media or anything. So we, to learn about careers, we basically went to uh, the guidance counselor and looked through books. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, well, I had a, uh, this is a story, maybe it's embarrassing or not, but Aaron sometimes finds this funny. So um, I, my, my, principal and said hey you're good at math you should become an engineer and of course i'm like i don't know what an engineer is i was you know first thought was the guy that drives a train I and mean, seriously right this is kind of funny but then i'm like oh wait a minute that's actually the person we cuss about when we're fixing farm equipment <laughs> so uh, then i went to south dakota school of mines because it was, it was 100 miles from the house and uh, it also was a good deal uh back then also um then I got a um, job designing electrical connectors in, uh, or the, the suspensions that, well, my co-op I had is a suspension, held the suspensions for uh, hard drives uh, that were, held the read-write cards. So that's all we did. So you can see that was a very specific small thing that we were designing. After college, uh, based on that experience, I got a, design, a job designing electrical connector components, um, which, I wasn't so excited about and then we moved to Minnesota and I ended up getting a job designing forestry equipment which you know for a kid off the ranch you know what's better than the you know big 20,000 pound you know 250 horsepower machine right so and then through the times I just um, got promotions uh, from working hard and you know just doing what was required and become a project engineer um, so now now pretty much I design and do whichever because of being a project engineer, you have to be responsible for everything on the machine. And if we didn't have an engineer that could do a, something, I had to figure it out. So that allowed me to become pretty good at a lot of different things, but not an expert at any one thing. Um, so I get uh, pulled in for a lot of different things. Um, I'd say the person that guided me the most along the way was a, a boss that I, that I had. Um, his name is Jim Cox and his, one of his sayings was lead follower, get out of the way. And so kind of like set the kind of the attitude and, and uh, how to follow up, you know, the, the people that always follow up and publish meeting notes and things like that, or, or the ones that kind of uh, dictate the path. So I guess the final pitch I'd have, or Aaron, do you have anything you want to add before we do our final pitch for mechanical engineering? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, um, like I said before, mechanical engineering is a wide uh, variety of, uh, of just disciplines and things you do. Um, yeah, you don't have to worry that you're going to be stuck doing calculus every day for the rest of your life, right? I, yeah. I have a calculator. Uh, most of the math I do is on my uh, 
on my calculator on my computer, you know, just hit it and do some adding or, or an Excel spreadsheet. I mean, so, mm -hmm. but that's just me. I mean, other places I have to do a lot more analysis. Yeah. So that's kind of the beauty of how wide mechanical engineering is. You can do a lot of the solid works and kind of the assembly and stuff like that, or you can go into very research heavy fields such as, um, aerospace. They do a lot. Um, they do a lot of programming math and stuff like that. So they, they do really in-depth analysis and they do high level math every day, or you can do more like what you do. So that's, you know, and the salary is good. The hours are, are pretty mm -hmm. manageable. So it's uh, it's definitely a good career. Yeah. I'd say probably my biggest pitch for it is it's a, it's a fairly fast paced thing where it's, you know, it can be a lot of work, but at the same time, it's a lot of fun and it's really rewarding to go from having a problem to like actually building and seeing the physical solution for it. I guess that's probably my favorite part is mm -hmm. working through the whole process and, you know, you put in all this effort with your coworkers and friends and then, you know, you guys finally get to have this product that goes out into the world. Definitely. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to leave my contact information. Your instructor will, uh, will have that. I believe is how this will work. Mm -hmm. um, I am open for job shadows or just, you know, some quick calls. If somebody wants to uh, ask a question, uh, I do work from home. So we'd have to somehow arrange a uh, public meeting area for a job shadow. Um, mm -hmm. if, if that's something that people are interested in. Yeah. All right. I think that's all we have, right, Aaron? Um, as a final note, check the guy girl ratio of the school you go to. <laughs> <laughs>